uh, following the talk of the Andrew uh, Delore last week on the elastic wave testing in the rock materials, today I would uh, uh, like to focus on the uh, the sound inter interaction with the unconsolidated, the dense granular materials, uh, which could be uh, wet, uh, but dry, wet, or saturated by the water. So these are the model systems, so composed of uh, the glass space or the sand particles. So here uh, we will utilize acoustic waves, uh, not only as a probe, to uh, monitor the, the materials, uh, uh, but also as a pump to fluidize the, uh, this uh, uh, grand median and the triggering the possible instability. Uh, we believe that this lab experiments could help to better understand, for example, the, the earthquake, uh, the landslides, as well as the quicksands triggered by the seismicity. Yeah, so this work has been realized mainly by the PhD students, uh, the postdoc at the University of uh, the Manavale becoming the Gustave Eiffel, but also the students at the Longjuan Institute of the ESPCI. In particular, I appreciate the initiation by Christian de Gao Li at the Sorbonne University about uh, two, decades, two decades ago now on this fascinating topic of the friction, uh, instability, and the granular acoustics. But and also the Paul Johnson for uh, the, the work together uh, to the dynamic earthquake triggering at the North Ramos, and also Anne Mongelet at the Institute of the Physics of the Globe in Paris for the Rock 4 or the Grand uh, uh, Avalanche Study, and uh, finally, of course, uh, to uh, Arnaud Duhan at the Langevin Institute for working together on this uh, acoustic. Uh, uh, of the granular, uh, the granular materials. The granular median are only present in the nature and uh, believe as the second type of the materials, the most utilized in the world after water. But they are also involved frequently in the catastrophic by events. Yeah. So one of the challenging issue in the geophysics is to uh, understand or better understand how a small uh, amplitude of the seismic waves trigger the nature, uh, uh, nature catastrophic uh, events uh, such as a remote uh, dynamic triggering of the earthquake uh, observed and reported uh, Frank, uh, many years ago by John uh, Gomberg. I'm happy she's here. Uh, but uh, also, we may have some uh, triggering, more local uh, triggering of the, uh, of the land slides, the rock fall, or something else. Well, I would like to say Chris uh, uh, is one of the first uh, to investigate the fault dynamics by controlled the lab experiments with the simulated granular goose uh, and the lab quake in the lab. Uh, I just want to make sure, could you see my pointer? Yes, yes. we see it. Yes. Thank okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, yeah, so several mechanisms has already been proposed to to explain this uh, dynamic earthquake triggering, such as the acoustic uh, the fl uh, fluidization or other uh, mechanisms, just the, uh, the granular, uh, very low rotation, uh, rotation or the granular friction. But uh, uh, as indicated by Didier Sonnet many years ago, that the acoustic pressure in the fields frequently uh, uh, would be too small 
to open uh, for the contact between the rocks or between the blocks. So this uh, uh, opening mode was uh, frequently mentioned in the traditional, in the classic acoustic fluidization could be uh, questionable in somehow. So here we proposed another scenario, well, since I'm uh, uh, furious now, based on the sheer acoustic uh, uh, lubrication of the, con uh, of the contact, which can somehow reduce, uh, of course, uh, the contact stiffness and uh, consequently the elastic modulus and also uh, uh, the ear stress without uh, particularly uh, without the opening of the, con uh, of the contact, which can lead to the failure, including in the case of the granular avalanche, the land sliding. Uh, from a more fundamental viewpoint, the granular matter is, con is considered as an thermal metastable uh, system, which are dissipative among the possible different states determined by the, uh, the external driving, such as the shear or uh, vi uh, vibration. We are particularly interested here by the jammed uh, solid state and its uh, transition to the flowing state via the plastic deformation. To this end, yeah, to understand better the, the, the transition from solid to the liquid state, we utilize the, the, the acoustic uh, uh, rheology where uh, the acoustic waves uh, not only uh, utilize as uh, a probe, as I mentioned in the beginning, but also as a, uh, 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 a probe, I'm sorry, just uh, but also as a pump. But uh, this pump uh, is very small, could be very small without create the rearrangement of the particles. I will try to convince you with our uh, experiments at the lab. Okay, so uh, this unjamming and uh, transition from the solid state to the liquid state exists uh, as a matter of fact in many a divided the medium uh, when the particle concentration is uh, high, high enough. Okay, in the sense, a colloid, the emulsion, all the foams. But different with uh, these soft matters, the interparticle solid friction and the resulting force network play a major role in the static, but also the, the dynamic behavior of the granular materials. Note that this uh, unjamming transition or the solid to liquid flowing uh, transition, uh, as we can see, is apparently uh, correlated in somehow to this uh, stick step instability uh, dynamics, which uh, uh, of course have been found in many systems over a very large uh, scales from the molecular boundary lubrication to the earthquake, uh, the interest of this uh, uh, community is, uh, yeah, but, but the passing also from the galaxy physics, uh, the rheology to the granular flow. Well, uh, compared to the photoelastic methods, apply in the 2D disc packings, which illustrate this very nice heterogeneous contact and network, the sound waves, the sound waves provide a very unique probe of this contact and network, but also a pump, which are even applicable in the 3D systems. So as a function, uh, as a function of the wavelengths, Okay, it's a wavelength uh, to the grand size. Yeah, to so this kind of uh, grand size, we may uh, distinguish the, between this uh, low frequency, this uh, is a low frequency, and the the, the long wavelengths, uh, the coherent waves, propagating uh, palestically, 
And also this high frequency, so high frequency of multiple scattered rays, the coda rays, which is uh, uh, yeah, uh, scattered by this uh, uh, false chains. So let's uh, prove the long wavelengths of the coherent rays, of course, can know us to measure the elastic modulars and also the structure such as the co coordination number, for example, they are, of course, an effective medium approach or mean field approach via the sound velocity measurements, P waves or shear waves, while this uh, uh, short wave, uh, wavelengths, the multiple scatter waves are extremely sensitive to any change at the internal structure, including the internal dissipation at the scale uh, of, the kind of the contact. For example, as shown here, by the addition of 0.01% uh, of the oil in volume can induce the intrins intrinsic absorption by a factor of five, in other words, the 500%. Uh, okay. So here uh, is uh, the, uh, the outline of my talk. In the first part, I will describe the acoustic probing of, uh, of the dry granular materials on the, in a confined granular, uh, granular uh, medium in a direct shear at, at test, a kind of a unidirectional uh, shear. And after that, I'm also interested by the hysterical behavior on the oscillatory shear of this uh, system. And also I will show you some recent uh, investigation of this uh, st stick-step instability in the shear the granular layers, these are thin layers, very similar to the Chris experiments by the, the acoustic emission, but also the optical visualization of the structure change during the stick slip. And of course, the finally, we will investigate the high frequency, the acoustic triggering of this kind of shear instability to simulate, to simulate the lab quakes. And in the second part, why we're focused on the triggering of the shear instability, but in a weakly stressed the, the median, for example, at the free surface, such as interface uh, sliding or the granular uh, avalanches. I will assume that uh, the precisely small amplitude uh, ultrasound can trigger the instability via uh, I mentioned uh, acoustic lubrication, the uh, shear lubrication of the contact without the macroscopic rearrangement uh, of the grants. Uh, if I have the time in the third and the last part, and I will describe the, the ball sinking in a dense granular sediments under a horizontal vibration. So I will discuss uh, uh, this uh, unusual quick sense behavior uh, on the basis of uh, the friction of rheology and of course the effect, as I mentioned, this uh, acoustic uh, lubrication. And uh, if I have time, <laughs> I'm not sure. Of course, I will assume that all this uh, kind of uh, liquefaction effects is also associated with a softening of the shear modulus, which could be detected by the shear wave propagation. Okay, now uh, uh, let me uh, start with the shear band, the fo uh, investigation of the shear band the fo uh, formation uh, monitored here by the shear wave propagation. So yeah, it's very important, which uh, we are allowed us to detect, of course, this shear modulus change during this shear bending uh, up to, yeah, the shear localization, of course, 
and also the rearrangement of the contact uh, network in this uh, OPEC medium. Of course, there are some uh, other methods I mentioned before, such as a photoelastic visualization in a 2D system or X-ray detection, but it's not a very uh, uh, practical yeah, for the fuse application. So uh, glass piece here. So the motor system we investigate the grand median is the glass piece here are confined in such a director shear here via the run deposition of, uh, for a, a dense packing. So we can prepare the dense granular system or the loose one via a decompaction uh, process. And uh, the mechanical response, so here is the shear force normalized by the, by the applied the normal stress as a function of the shear displacement here. We observed, yeah, so uh, we, uh, yeah, we observed from here is a, a more elastic uh, response up to, up to a peak for the dense uh, uh, packing, but uh, without this peak for the loose packing and after that we will go to a, a critical state or a residual state where, the, the, where uh, we will have the shear bending. I will show you uh, just, uh, uh, just later. This, uh, me, uh, uh, this uh, measurements just in the uh, Chris book uh, group also combined with the volume uh, measurements yeah, to detect this kind of uh, dynamic we do observe the, for a dense granular system. Okay, but if uh, we shared a, a, a loose uh, system of dilatancy, is that uh, increase of the volume is uh, is very small. Sometimes we more observed uh, compaction. So the initial state of the packing is something very important. Yeah, here we also observed, uh, or we also measured the re response of the reloading in the same direction or in the opposite uh, uh, direction. Yeah, or in the opposite the direction after, after already the, fo uh, the formation of the pre shear banding. So we do also this kind of uh, amendment. You can see here the di uh, dynamic in a, a pre shear system is uh, negligible. In this case, it's just kind of very reminiscent to a sliding uh, between two rough solid blocks. So the evolution of the shear wave velocity is also detected during this shear bending uh, process. We do observe a weakening of the shear wave velocity here when we shear it, which is mainly due to the decrease of the coordination number. In other words, uh, the average number of the, uh, of the contact are probably related to this uh, dilatancy. Okay, we observed in a dense packing, this uh, decrease of the shear bending, also in the loose one, probably due to this uh, Co co uh, decrease the coordination number, which is uh, consistent with the simulation here. Okay, but also there are uh, simulation clearly show that there is a development of the anisotropy of the contact, what we call the, the fabric an, uh, anisotropy. So this kind of things uh, should be taken into account also in this shear system. And uh, we observe that during the reloading, I mean, after the shear bending, the formation, if we reload in the, in the same direction or in the opposite direction, we no longer observe any shear wave uh, time of flight. In, in, in other words, we don't see during this reloading uh, process any change 
of the shear wave velocity, which is probably due to the fact that on the external noting of the shear bending formation, it is just like a kind of sliding between the two solids. So the, the median is no longer significantly changed during the shear bending, the shear band formation. Yeah, but still we can uh, observe some, uh, we still have some acoustic uh, signature of the, of the, of the, uh, of the initial state uh, preparation. So uh, to better understand uh, the uh, shear band, uh, the formation, we have uh, investigated uh, the response uh, of this uh, dance. So we look at the, in the dance, uh, grand median subjected, uh, subjected to the, to the cyclic, the, the repeated uh, oscillatory shear here, okay, with uh, uh, a shear amplitude, which is less uh, to the, e to the peak yield uh, stress, we observed, well, a very nice uh, hysteretic uh, mechanical response and the evolution of the shear wave speed during this uh, oscillatory shear is uh, also is uh, also measured here, except the first, uh, the first uh, secret loading we do observe also a repeated uh, hysteric response. So uh, such uh, uh, evolution is likely uh, associated with the different metastable uh, state or the zoom inside exploit by, this, uh, by the system. They are probably a kind of, we call the, the flip events between this uh, a different shear transformation zoom. Yeah, it's uh, uh, interesting to note that uh, such kind of uh, hysteretic behavior is also observed. Well, here is a, a simulation in a 2D simulation during a cycle tightening of a granular layer. It's a, a granular pile here. If this uh, uh, rotation is uh, far below the avalanche angle, in other words, from the yield, we still can observe this kind of uh, reversible uh, change, okay, which is uh, related uh, apparently to the, uh, to the anisotropy or the fabric of the contact during uh, this kind of uh, uh, tightening. Uh, uh, as you know, that uh, our shear wave velocity is very sensitive to the contact and also this uh, fabric anisotropy. It's not very uh, surprising that we do excess. We, we can have the excess via yeah, the shear wave velocity to such a, such a kind of a structure change. Uh, now let's investigate the response of this large amplitude oscillator shear when we increase more and more this uh, shear oscillation, we will see that, okay, uh, for example, we just uh, uh, investigate here, we do uh, observe, uh, observe that during uh, oscillating shear, this sound velocity can vary between a maximum value and a minimum one. This variation becomes lower. At the beginning, it is increased probably due to a total structure change when we shear it. But if the oscillating shear amplitude is larger than a certain the year stress, as we can observe here, this variation of the shear wave velocity becomes a smaller uh, and, and, uh, and smaller. Yeah, when the shear bending, when we uh, accept uh, this uh, uh, year stress and tune and the shear bending is uh, uh, established, 
as we observed before, of course, it's just like a two kind of block shearing and the old particles are far from, uh, yeah, far from this layer of shear band remains unchanged now, uh, nearly unchanged under this external uh, loading because the shear banding is the weakest zoom. In that case, we no longer observe any uh, sound shear sound velocity change. Yeah, this is precisely what we observed here. Okay, uh, well, and let me show you that the sound velocity uh, uh, can also allow us to, to investigate some uh, precursor events before the failure. I mean, the before we reach this uh, peak of, of force and also the intimate, uh, in, uh, intermediate dynamics during this uh, uh, plastic flow, which is almost stable, stable in the sense that this uh, stick step uh, uh, instability is uh, not very large between the maximum one and the, and the smaller one. To do that, we utilize over multiple scattered codons, as I mentioned at the beginning, which is very sensitive to the minus change of the contact at the scale of the contact. To do so, we just look at the correlation function. So if the contact network remained in, uh, intact, of course, from a moment for a small uh, shear displacement, these quarter waves should not change. So it should remain corrected with a value near the two one. However, the minus change should produce a decorrelation of this uh, multiple scattered quarter waves. So uh, th uh, this is uh, what I show here for the dense packing, which uh, it, uh, illustrates uh, intermittent dynamics, likely associated, as I, uh, I mentioned, with the contact and network change or the change of change of the grand position as this zoom shown here. This blue curve is the stress job, and the green one is the decorrelation uh, detected by this very sensitive uh, code always. So we do believe that in addition to the shear wave velocity measurements or the softening before the failure, this coda waves uh, decorrelation could uh, provide us also very useful information because it's a very sensitive. So now I will uh, try to show you some uh, recent works uh, by a PhD a student, Gu Yu, uh, in the lab. Now in a much in a thin granular layers. So we still utilize this shear box, but uh, we focus on this shear layer. As uh, Chris and uh, and Paul has investigated. Uh, uh, previously. So we do observe for uh, uh, this kind of uh, stick slip instability in a wet cohesive, in a wet cohesive glass base. It's very important. And uh, with the detection, with also the detection of the acoustic emission here. So it's a kind of uh, lab quakes. Here, the histogram of uh, the histogram of the acoustic emission is much uh, rich, much more sensitive to the stress jobs, the detection here. Okay, and it is uh, consistent. Yeah, this kind of a uh, mm, uh, uh, PDF, the, this kind of a histogram of acoustic uh, emission is uh, very similar to the observation by Paul and Chris in the similar uh, uh, in the system uh, in the similar shear uh, the, the granular layers okay uh, well now i will try uh, to show you something else okay uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, new experiments we try to observe the motion of the particles, okay, during a stick slip event here. I'm sorry, 
during a stick, uh, stick events here, thanks to uh, a technique of the particle tracking through a transparent wall. So we, we tried to replace our share box, the natural wall with a transparent one. And here is uh, for the optical reason, we have worked on the wet ceramic piece, which is white, so it, it, it's better, so, but it's very similar. And uh, uh, we observed here that uh, during the stick, uh, during this uh, stick phase, okay, during this uh, stick, the particles uh, motions is very small. So the velocity is very small and uh, a bit fluctuating, but it's quite white, quite uh, homogeneously, uh, widely distributed. So it's uh, I moved everywhere in space, except to nodes in the in the boundary. Okay, why during a slip uh, during a slip we have a very quick motion of the ground particles, which are about one hundred times higher, together with the formation of the two coherent, more or less coherent block. Uh, motion in the opposite direction. All the green arrows means that the, the particles have a, a component which is a, a moved in the, in the uh, opposite direction. We do fear that at, 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 the, at the beginning, a part of the particles, which is a shear, just like the, the force trends. And when we yield a certain value, they are a kind of a buckling buckling effect, pr uh, pr uh, producing a motion of the particles in the opposite direction. We do observe a clear uh, appearance of these two blocks. So in some sense, it is a, a bit reminiscent to the above observation uh, uh, of the shear band because we have two blocks. One is moved in, um, toward the right, the other one is in the opposite direction. So we do observe some uh, reminiscence here. Now here I will show something else, which is the mechanical response and also the acoustic emission observed in a dry glass space. In opposite to the wet glass space, we observed a much more stable, uh, yeah, it's a much stable, uh, the uh, sliding together with a more classic distribution of the acoustic emission. In other words, uh, um, the, the lab quake or earthquake loss here. Yeah, we no longer observe this characteristic quasi periodic uh, stress job. Here is the uh, Again, the optic uh, visualization, we realized that during this uh, stable, uh, more or less uh, stable sliding, again, in a dry ceramic piece, okay? Except again, you know, something here close, uh, close to the boundary, we observed again, the slow particle motion. So it's very slow, I'm sorry. So this is, uh, yeah, the, the, here is the, is the velocity slow. But it's quite well distributed in space, more or less homogeneous, of course. So still, with this uh, uh, stor uh, casting motion uh, around uh, average flowing direction. Yeah, so we have a, a, a different structure. Interestingly, our observation here are quite consistent with those discussed by, uh, by, uh, by Yuda Banzium series ago in what he called the, the, uh, the disordered, yeah, the disordered fault networks and the localized and the localized the, the sleeping uh, fault zoom. So yeah. The dynamics of the localized of this more uh, oh, 
I'm sorry, just the dynamics of this more localized thought seems to exhi exhibit this uh, velocity weakening stick step instability with, of course, a more localized coherent block motion. You can see here we have a patch uh, which is uh, in motion surrounded to, uh, I mean, with the, with the surrounding, uh, the medium, which is uh, still in the uh, stick phase. Why knows what we call the, the disordered, the network here is, okay, involved a more, well, we will say more stable, but still fluctuating motion with a more uh, uh, distributed motion. In other words, it involved the, the, the much more particles, very similar in what we call, what they call the, the second order uh, continuous like uh, transition. Instead, uh, the first one, this is a stick, a stick one, is uh, much more close to what they call the, the first order sp spinodal like uh, distribution. Uh, oh, sorry, the transition with this uh, appearance of this uh, quasi -stat uh, uh, characteristic, uh, quasi static, uh, quasi parodic, sorry, uh, stick step in instability. So, yeah, we still have uh, many things to understand there. So, uh, now to finish this uh, first part. Uh, I should discuss, just look at it over time, yeah. I should discuss now the ultrasonic uh, uh, triggering of uh, uh, this shear instability in the granular layer. So again, we have uh, this system upon the application of the high amplitude, the ultrasound. I see the high amplitude is not so high, huh? it's just, uh, of 10 nanometers. So it still remained uh, ultrasound, high frequency, high enough frequency, and quite no uh, uh, amplitude. So in this uh, uh, stick step uh, in step regimes, more or less uh, regular, because we also find some cases uh, stick step are there, but it's less uh, uh, regular. Uh, in general, the ultrasound uh, triggering induced, I mean, the ultrasound induced uh, instantaneously this, this uh, stress drop. And in particular, reduce, re, uh, reduce uh, uh, the difference between the maximum, the, stre uh, maximum, the maximum year stress and the uh, the minimum one here, okay, and uh, which uh, lead to a more or less uh, a stable, or we will say more uh, special distributed or or, or stable uh, uh, stable sliding. As the, sometimes the people observed in the granular flow system. Okay, the vibration we are uh, making the system uh, uh, slide more more stably, uh, uh, more or less. It, it, it is the case. But uh, what is uh, uh, so? These things are just uh, uh, to mention. Uh, I record what uh, Paul Johnson and Chris uh, uh, have observed uh, with uh, John uh, Goldman uh, several years ago to look at. Uh, this expand, we find some, uh, oh yeah, some difference. Uh, well, uh, the clock advanced slips is still here, but uh, we systematically have the decrease of the the year stress, and also the, the uh, this this difference. Okay, I just want to, to mention that in another experiments, uh, which is. Uh, uh, much more stable. This uh, uh, ultrasound triggering is, um, is much more important. It's uh, uh, it, even uh, the fantastic. We do observe this kind of uh, decrease, uh, very sudden decrease of the year stress. Okay, 
So I will discuss all this uh, uh, acoustic triggering uh, mechanisms here uh, together in this uh, second part of this talk, together with the mechanism of the acoustic triggering in the weekly, uh, in the weekly confined uh, the system here. Indeed, we do believe that the mechanism involved here, as I mentioned at the beginning, might be similar in the highly stressed medium, such as uh, the seismic force, or in the weakly confined system, so even the, the interface sliding, but also the free surface of granular, uh, 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 the granular avalanches here. So in the next, I will try to show some experiments, some examples of the acoustic triggering in these two systems, in this weekly uh, stress system. From experimental viewpoint, it's much more easy to observe this kind of uh, failure triggered by the uh, uh, acoustic waves associated with the slide. So one of the first controlled experiments has been, uh, has been carried out by the uh, Bombay and the Gaholis group, uh, where uh, just a, a simple slider was uh, put on an uh, inclined plane be below this avalanche angle or the sliding angle. Okay, then the drive, uh, uh, this slider is driven by a low frequency uh, mechanical oscillation with a quite large amplitude of the order of uh, one uh, micron. So it's about 10 and 100 times larger than our acoustic uh, uh, triggering experiments. As a, a function of the static shear force, close or not to the failure, but also the amplitude of this uh, oscillation uh, shear, they observe both a creep region and the acce accelerated the, the sliding regime, in other words, a kind of uh, the avalanche. So yeah, as you can show here, this observation here uh, 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 in where a kind of a purification phenomenon in other words, if the, 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 if the, external, uh, the external driving is not high enough, this uh, uh, creep flow, we are more or less uh, stabilized. It's never, it's never completely stopped, but it's uh, a kind of a log, very slow creep, the, the, the phenomena. And if you below a, a certain year, you will this kind of uh, sliding is a kind of a, nucleation regime. And all this behavior has been very explained by this rate and state, the, the, the rise and arena models, which is proposed precisely in this high stress, the stick step domain. In other words, this kind of purification uh, uh, the phenomena in the weekly confined system could be compared to nose with the highly uh, stressed system. So we have realized a similar experiments in, in the Manavane uh, um, many years ago with a, a mono contact of the interface here. So we, we just have a, a, a few, a, a one layers, just a one layer, but more precisely it's three particles with a very controlled, the adhesive films here, which is uh, uh, deposed on a high frequency, is a five uh, megahertz uh, uh, shear cross. So yeah, uh, so here uh, this uh, uh, cross resonator could uh, serve not only as a probe, okay, uh, to uh, but also a pump, uh, the uh, a probe of this interfacial. Uh, stiffness, but also as a pump to uh, create uh, this uh, kind of interfacial uh, sliding. We do observe uh, two phenomena. The first of all, we have uh, a softening of the interfacial stiffness, B 
before the failure here is about uh, 35 degrees. So we just measure the, the resonance frequency and to detect the contact uh, uh, shear modulus. Uh, yeah, so the second thing is that the sliding could be triggered well below uh, the sliding angle, which is about here, which uh, in, uh, in our system, as I mentioned, is about the uh, 35, uh, 35 degree. I can, we even can trigger it just before, uh, well before around the 20 degree, okay? So yeah, this is really the phenomenon we observed. As uh, so this ultrasound high frequency cannot induce any macroscopic motion of the grains because the frequency is very high due to the initial effect. So this uh, ultrasound induced the decrease of this uh, static or the parent static friction coefficient should be understood. So we have a decrease here should be understood by the acoustic lubrication of this uh, stuck contact between the two grains, the herzing contact, just because of this uh, slipping, we may observe from this uh, macro slip from the edges, which will reduce this uh, area of the contact, okay? this uh, rear area of the contact, if you reduce the area of the contact, of course, uh, you will reduce this uh, uh, yield stress. In other words, you reduce this apparent static friction. So yeah, this is really the, the, the very important things. I want to stress on, on one point, this kind of trigger the flowing with this shear uh, with this shear mode, okay? It's not, a, not a, the opening wave mode, okay? It, because uh, it's much more efficient to create this kind of failure by the, uh, the opening wave mode by uh, a factor of, uh, 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 yes, uh, a factor about 100. We have a two order of uh, uh, magnitude between this uh, shear induced uh, uh, triggering, uh, the, the fluidization, acoustic lubrication or fluidization, and uh, the opening mode. So it's really the, uh, the message uh, yeah, for, for this controlled study. We have, uh, of course, uh, uh, extended this triggering experiments. Uh, of the sliding to the granular uh, avalanche, again, triggered by this high frequency ultrasound. Here is an example. Uh, we do, we triggered with a very small amplitude, just about five nanometers is here. Note, ho uh, note however, when the inclination angle is a slightly less the avalanche uh, angle, just to say two degrees here, the ultrasound triggered a faster granular flow here, okay, which is independent to the, uh, the ultrasound. In other words, if you initiate this flowing just like, uh, with a very short, uh, a very short uh, uh, ultrasound uh, vibration, you cannot stop it. Here, here just to go, as I shown here. This uh, flowing velocity is independent of the ultrasound amplitude. However, if the initial inclination angle is much smaller, just like uh, say five degrees, more or less, uh, less than an uh, angle of the repose. In other words, the, the minimum angle, well, is a kind of, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the angle of the repose. In that case, the ultrasound will induce, as I shown here, a kind of uh, intermediate flow and the, whose uh, flowing velocity will depend on the ultrasound amplitude here. In other words, if you stop during this flowing the ultrasound, the flowing, the intermediate flow, flowing will stop. So uh, this uh, looks like a kind of a purification behavior Again, similar to the to the solid 
uh, friction sliding, we observed it uh, just before in the experiments of the Bonberger and the Kaholi. Okay, yeah. Uh, note that this purification phenomena existed in many systems, as we mentioned, governed by this kind of velocity weakening friction due to the presence of this uh, instable and, and the stable regimes. But in both regimes of this flow, okay, triggered by the ultrasound in our experiments, this vibration amplitude is so small, so it cannot induce any macroscopic rearrangement of the grains. And instead, as I mentioned, the ultrasound can lubricate uh, the particle contact. So in, in that case, we can reduce the interparticle friction. Okay, we have worked with this uh, very simple friction model, which is very similar in terms of the result to the return state. But the advantage of this model, we have uh, uh, the explicit uh, uh, participation of the interparticle uh, uh, friction. That's why we, we have utilized this model to explain uh, over experiments. So just to say that if we uh, uh, produce a decrease of the friction, the amplitude, so we can reduce uh, this uh, 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 threshold. So as a function of the initial inclination, inclination angle, for example, if we put it at the beginning, just between this uh, maximum angle or this uh, minimum angle, we call it a repose angle. If you trigger it, uh, uh, we may produce uh, a flowing. We will go to this switch. So this uh, trigger the flow regime, even when you stop the vibration, you can still go to the other side of this flow. If you stop here, you will come back. This is the initial flow, uh, rheologic curves. This one is uh, pin one is uh, with the vibration. However, if the initial angle is below to this uh, repose, repose angle, you can trigger the flowing, but if you stop it, you the only way, it, is to come back. So the position stable uh, 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 configuration is just come back. You, you, so this is the precise what we have uh, observed here. Uh, we, we can, uh, from the motion of the e e equation with this flowing uh, law to observe a kind of, well, if uh, the inclination angle is high enough close to, the failure, you will produce this uh, stable flow. Uh, otherwise, uh, you were kind of a jammed creep flow, which could have stopped if you uh, removed the vibration. Uh, well, because of time, I tried to, I will not show these results with uh, Paul Durand as a, a master student. We have to do some uh, uh, experiments here, uh, yeah, I can show you. Not only we can see uh, from from a top view, of course, we can also see this kind of trigger flow from from the lateral uh, wall. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, what I want to say is that I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, what I want to show that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, uh, is that the what we call the the nature of flowing? Uh, because the the avalanche angle is just a twenty four. You will see this kind of flowing, but uh, here it is uh, the trigger angle, but it's uh, very close to the avalanche angle, and uh, the last one. It's a one we are uh, we are um, uh, look quite far. So what is important? Uh, what we observed here is that uh, definitely the vibration triggered flowing is much more homogeneous if or yeah than this uh, nature of flowing. 
of course, you have this kind of uh, the, the boundary condition. But uh, uh, here, here again, we, we, we have a feeling that uh, the vibration, sorry, I just come back. Yeah. Uh, this uh, benzium uh, assumes that if the vibration can reduce this uh, um, maximum year stress and the, the minimum one, we may, as we do here, we may, yeah, have a kind of uh, more stable flowing. Okay, this is uh, especially speaking. This is what I want to say. So from this. Uh, Average experiments is much more easy to observe such kind of things. So as a last slide, I just want to show that we also observed a kind of a delayed the triggering of the avalanche in the wet, in the wet, in the granite base. Okay. So I want to show you, at the beginning, you can see a kind of creep here. I'm, I don't know if you can see it here. At the beginning, you can see a kind of, yeah. You, we have a, a creep regime where uh, the motion is very small, but a uh, few moments uh, later, one uh, half a second later, we have uh, this kind of uh, acceleration of the flow. Okay, so yeah, I just uh, want to, to insist on this point that, uh, yeah, this point is that uh, this kind of uh, sheer acoustic uh, lubrication is really the mechanism uh, to trigger this kind of uh, insta uh, instability. So I don't know, I still have, uh, Chris, five minutes, five or 10 minutes, something like that? I think so, sure, yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, thank you. And, so I, Maybe just remind people if they have a question um, and they're yeah. not, Do, uh, yeah, please ask it, I think it's okay. So, but uh, yeah, otherwise, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, a couple more minutes and then we'll break for the questions. Xiaoping, I have a quick question. Yeah. Hi, right, Clay Wood here. Um, so when you, called your granular material wet, uh, does that mean that it's uh, saturated with? That it's no, like it's not heated? saturated, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's partially wetted. So it's just like the humidity. Okay. It, it's really bad, it's, uh, the, it's the capillary force. So we, we just uh, uh, create, I mean, uh, introduce a capillary cohesion. Mm, so it's, it's, uh, as you can see, from our last experiments, this granular layer, the avalanche is not put it in water. It, 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 it's just like the in air, but it's wetted uh, by some liquid. Okay. H have you done anything like this where you've controlled the uh, degree of humidity or, or saturation? It's a, <laughs> it's a very nice way. This experiment is uh, quite recent. Yeah, we, uh, we, we could do that, but it's the very beginning. And uh, I can show some more results that when you vary um, the, the amount of, uh, of the liquid, in other words, the cohesion degree, uh, the mechanical behavior is a change, it's clearly. Um, yeah, so as we can expect it, it's just like uh, the, the sand castle, if you uh, modify this weighting degree, you may produce a kind of uh, um, sand castles is uh, much more stable, right? You may even have uh, a flowing angle system, uh, it, which is vertical. So after the, the grains have flowed, uh, some of the grains have flowed down, then there's a delay, and then some of the other, some of the other uh, part of it fails. Um, is there a reason why there is a delay? Is it does it have something to do with the, the local saturation or humidity after some amount moves? Is there some air currents that could, some small air currents that could affect, I don't know. Okay, at the moment we have, we don't have a, a careful investigation for that. But uh, we, we saw of our past experiments because we wet the system by adding the liquids. 
So by our previous uh, experiments and also the optic uh, uh, investigation of the capillary uh, the bridges, uh, the distribution of the liquid is quite uh, homogeneous. Mm. But uh, why you you know it's a story of the rupture and the fracture. We never uh, must aware. It's a precisely it's an instable system. This is this kind of a nucleation. Uh, of this rupture could it depend on the different things. Uh, for the moment, uh, we don't uh, master at all. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for this question. It's uh, precisely the last experiments I will told you is uh, the granular materials, which is uh, saturated, uh, totally saturated in water. So in that sense, I will call it uh, a quick sense experiments, okay? But uh, I will show you a, a, a photos here. So it is a, a granular uh, 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 sediment, which is uh, uh, prepared in a way, it is a, it's very dense. So we start with a dense uh, system. So I will show you two experiments here. One is the dry one. You can see this ball following down as soon as we apply the horizontal vibration, it's not a vertical one, it's a horizontal one. So, so it, it, is, it takes time to go inside and we see with some uh, uh, agitation, ag agitation of this uh, small glass space, the particles, uh, yes, uh, somewhere here, okay? So, okay. Now, if we do the same thing in the water saturated granular systems, uh, you will see what is happening. The falling is uh, much more quick. We can understand that it could due to this kind of uh, the liquid uh, fluidization, the hydrodynamic um, uh, yeah, the lubrication. And particularly what's, uh, what I want to say is that if you look at uh, far from this piece, this horizontal vi vibration of the low frequency, I should uh, precise, it's just like the shaking. So now I'm talking about uh, the low frequency triggering, but uh, what is uh, important here is that in the case of the saturated the system, under the horizontal vibration, you still don't see the significant motion of the small particles. This is probably due to the caric terroristic time of the dry grand packing and the saturated one, the time is completely different. In the saturated system, it takes much more long time to make a re rearrangement. So here, our period of the low frequency vibration, but it is still shorter than the, the time necessary to make a rearrangement, a re 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 sorry, in the saturated granular uh, sediments. So to see things very clearly that under this vibration, in this condition, even this low frequency at the, the controlled amplitude do not create any significant motion of the particles, even in this dense saturated granular sediments. Okay, so we should understand why we will have this falling experiments we, we, without any significant rearrangement of the particles on the uh, horizontal uh, horizontally shaking. So yeah, more uh, precisely, our granular suspensions are uh, compressed of a small glass space, which is settled down in water and uh, uh, compact shake down under shaking. So all this preparation is under shaking. So we really to a very high uh, a solid fraction, the, uh, the volume, the medium is very dense and a steel ball of 10 uh, millimeters. So it's a very big one, okay? It's a very big one compared to small bits. It's very small here. So it's at the beginning, it's a rest at the surface. In other words, the sediments is a stable. It's a, it's a kind of solid. Okay, but uh, as soon as we apply this uh, horizontal uh, shaking, the ball start to, yeah, to sink in this uh, fluidized packing. And the ball position in this opaque 
system is detected with ultrasonic solar. So we have ultrasonic detection, otherwise you can see nothing inside. And you can see here is the ball trace monitored by the ultrasonic echoes. We can detect this echoes here. So we can find that when the horizontal vibration amplitude is increased, of course, the depth of the penetration of this uh, uh, falling ball is increased by, okay, a differential numerical differential, uh, di uh, numerical differentiation. We can also obtain this uh, uh, velocity of the falling ball and also the acceleration of the falling ball during the, in the course of a time, or we may also make a kind of a, a cross plot between the velocity, sinking velocity, and uh, the acceleration. We note that the ball reached very quickly. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a quasi steady state where the deceleration is a deceleration process becomes uh, negligible. So we we are focused on more on this uh, stable regime. Yeah, in in this uh, stable regime. So on the basis of the frictional rheology. Okay, uh, rheology law here, we call it mu of i, or a similar Bingham plastic fluids where the static friction mu zero, okay, the static mu zero, and the, the v, viscosity assumed to be uh, uh, uniform, we may deduce, okay, we may deduce the, uh, the changing of this static coefficient and also the effective of viscosity by just fitting uh, this uh, tress of the particles in the different amplitude of this shaking, okay? So we do observe here that there is a decrease, a significant decrease, a decrease of this yield, okay, of uh, this, uh, uh, yield stress, as, as well as uh, the effective viscosity of this uh, su uh, suspension. So yeah, so again, we try to explain this behavior again by a kind of uh, uh, acoustic induce this shear duplication between the contact without the opening, again, without the, the opening of the contact. We can imagine that all these things will deduce this macroscopic year uh, elastic, elastic models as well as the year stress. Uh, if I have just uh, three minutes, I can convince you that this low frequency shaking will indeed produce a deduced the elastic modulus, especially the shear modulus of the median. So yeah, I can measure also this uh, decrease of the shear modulus, not only this uh, year stress, okay? To do that, I will uh, change a little bit of our experiments for the, uh, for the simplicity. I will shake uh, this, uh, the same granular uh, sediments with a rougher plate here and to look at what is the shear acoustic is generated at the surface of the sediment, because it's much more easy to detect, for example, for a ultra fast uh, ultrasonic uh, sensor, we can measure the motion uh, at the surface, okay? So this is what we have done. So we do in the same system with the same, uh, with the same frequency here, right? We, with the same frequency. So we do a measure uh, a, a generated shear waves when you do this shaking, okay? And uh, by a numerical simulation, we can uh, show that these waves, well, it's a kind of a surface waves. It's a really like the surface, surface wave whose velocity is very close, of course, to this uh, shear wave velocity. So what we have shown that if you increase now this, uh, shear oscillation, uh, just like a shaking, we do observe the time of the flight of these shear waves from the shear plate source increased as a function of the shear amplitude, which corresponds to a decrease precisely 
a decrease of this shear modulus, again, without any uh, apparent motion, visible motion of the particles. So uh, this result, again, could be understood by the friction model developed by the multiple contact by the Gaudi and Bombege in which the sleeping, they have shown that the sleeping at the level of the asperity can lead to the softening of the inter interfacial uh, shear stiffness. Now, if we generalize these ideas to the concept to 3D granular packing, where the asperity is replaced just by our grand contacts, we can expect, of course, also a kind of the softening of the shear models. So it's uh, pre uh, precisely what we have uh, observed. So yeah, uh, in conclusion, I think it's uh, probably the, the moment to, to stop here. So uh, yeah, so we may see that uh, knowing the year stress by the sheer acoustic uh, lubrication at the level of the contest provides a mechanism to better understand, for example, the triggering of, uh, of the stick step instability or the earthquake or the land sliding, just like the avalanche, by this kind of a small amplitude seismic elastic waves, okay, in the different case. But, uh, but also, uh, we have shown that this kind of acoustic uh, uh, vibration-induced uh, the fluidization can occur without causing the packing density change. In other words, the volume change of the granular uh, sediments, but just via a sheer acoustic lubrication of the contact, as I mentioned, uh, at the beginning, over dense granular sediments, uh, uh, over uh, uh, granular sediment is already dense. So this, uh, uh, I will say, uh, sorry. Yeah, so we proposed a new mechanism of the quick sense. Uh, yeah, uh, due to this uh, solid skeleton, uh, 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 softening, which is not related to the pole pressure increase proposed in the classic liquefaction system when you have uh, the seismic waves, etc. So uh, by that, I thank you for your attention. I'm sorry to be a little bit longer. Beautiful. I'm going to um, invite everyone to uh unmute and join me in thanking Jumping for a fabulous talk.